close your eyes and focus on your breath. Give your full attention to the breathing in, the breathing out. Because when you give the breath your full attention, that your mind is fully present. Because that's what we're here for, to get the mind. But it's hard to focus straight on the mind, so you focus on something that's right nearby. And something that's very sensitive to what's going on in the mind. You'll notice that so when anger comes in or fear comes in, your breath is going to change. Any strong emotion, the breath is going to change. And sometimes as the motion just begins, the breath will already have changed. And if you're sensitive to the breath, you begin to notice, okay, something's up. Now we can breathe through the tension that builds up. And that weakens the emotion. It doesn't do away with it, but it makes it easier to deal with. So full attention to the breath. And notice what kind of breathing feels good. As you do this, both the body and the mind will benefit. The blood flows more evenly throughout the body. There are no areas that get stagnant. That's good for the health of the body. But even more important is that it's good for the health of the mind. The mind gets a place to rest and develop a sense of well-being inside that doesn't have to depend on things outside. After all, the mind is the most important possession you've got. And if its welfare depends on things outside, you're in bad shape. You have to learn how to teach it how to depend on itself. And part of that is getting it to settle down. Telling it to settle down and having it stay settled down so it really does listen to you. But there are other aspects as well. As the Buddha said, mind is your most important possession, but what are mind's most important possessions inside? In addition to the concentration, you've got virtue and you've got right view. Right view tells you that your actions really do matter, so it's important that you pay careful attention to what you're doing and saying and thinking. This is different from the world tells you. They, all they care about is if you buy their stuff and then they're happy whatever else you want to do. And they don't seem to be very responsible about the kind of stuff they're selling, whether it's going to be good for you or not. So you've got to look after yourself. Are your actions good for you? Are your words good for you? You've got to look into that. And as long as you are convinced that it really does make a difference what you do and say and think, then your ability to exert some control over your actions will be a lot stronger, more solidly based. And you think about your virtue, the things that you know would be beneath you that would be harmful, and you can say no, both because you're coming from a position of well-being associated with the breath, and because your views tell you, okay, it really does matter. The law of karma is 24-7. It's always in operation. So you want to make sure that during that 24-7 you don't do anything unskillful, anything harmful. That's the essence of the precepts. You want to make sure your intentions are always to do the skillful thing, to say the skillful thing, to think the skillful thing. When you've got these three qualities working together, your virtue, your concentration, and the discernment of right view, then you're really looking after yourself properly. You're looking after your most important possession properly, the state of your mind. Because if the mind is in good shape, no matter what happens outside, it doesn't have to be shaken. If the mind is in bad shape, then even the best things can happen outside and they're not good enough. So focus on the state of your mind. Look after your virtue, your concentration, and your discernment. And you'll be investing your time in the place where it's most wisely invested. looking after your most important possession, which is inside.